Welcome, dear listeners, to the Softly Spoken Science Podcast. I'm your host, the Softly Spoken Science Nerd, bringing you bedtime stories calculated to raise your knowledge level. This podcast is dedicated to the belief that a good, calm science talk will put you right to sleep. If you feel like this might be the case, hit like and subscribe now and tap the little bell to be notified about the next video. Then make yourself comfortable and let's drift away. Tonight we are returning to one of my all-time favorite dinosaur books growing up. The Dinosaur Society's Dinosaur Encyclopedia by Don Lessam and Donald Glutt. It was one of the most scientifically serious mass-market dinosaur books of the 1990s. My copy contains a personal dedication from the author and all my original annotations. It is a personal artifact from a childhood in another era. The era of the first two Jurassic Park films, just after we knew dinosaurs were warm-blooded, just before we knew they had feathers. This book is organized alphabetically. Tonight we will review from Abelosaurus to Allosaurus. Abelosaurus comahuensis was a large carnivore about the same size as Allosaurus fragilis. Abelosaurus is known only from an incomplete skull, which shows that it had a long head with a deep face and no horns or ornamentations over its eyes. Although we do not know what its body looked like, it may have been similar to Carnotaurus sastri, another large carnivore known from Argentina with long slender hind limbs, impossibly short forelimbs, and spectacular horns above its eyes. Notice how I erased Abelosaurus time period. That's because at this time I was a zealous young earth creationist, and I believed its true time period was 5,000 years ago. Well, that position was unsustainable. One reason it was unsustainable was it created pressure to identify Abelosaurus and Carnotaurus as the same animal. You see, creationists believed there were few enough different kinds of dinosaur that you could fit them all on one boat. They think there were one or at most two kinds of horned dinosaur, one or at most two kinds of allosaur, one or two kinds of tyrannosaur, one or two kinds of duckbill, one or two kinds of sauropod. They probably think there were one or two kinds of abelosaur, although they don't tend to know very much about abelosaurs. So that's why I had to wonder if abelosaurus and carnotaurus could possibly be the same animal. Abrictosaurus consors. Abrictosaurus was an early bird-hipped plant eater from the heterodontosaurid family. Like all heterodontosaurs, Abrictosaurus had cheek teeth and was a bipedal herbivore. What set Abrictosaurus apart from all other heterodontosaurids is that it had no pointed canine teeth at the front of its lower jaw. Well, since 1993, we've learned that some of them did. Abrictosaurus had a turkey-sized body and a long tail. Its head was about 10 centimeters long. Its forelimbs were small and delicate with hands that were probably used for plucking choice tidbits from the local plant life. Its hind limbs were much larger and were adapted for rapid running. Acanthopholus horridus. Acanthopholus was a small member of the nodosaur family, armored dinosaurs without tail clubs. Although illustrations and descriptions of this dinosaur have often appeared in popular books, we know little about its appearance. What we do know suggests that most of the illustrations are incorrect. Its hefty spines, about 24 centimeters long, are often omitted from representations. What we now know about Acanthopholus suggests that this dinosaur did not differ greatly in size from its earlier British relatives Hylaeosaurus and Polacanthus, nor in appearance from its larger North American relative Sauropelta. It may have had a long tail like that of Sauropelta, most likely, it belongs to the same branch of the Nodosaurid family tree. The major problem with Acanthopholus horridus is that no complete specimen has ever been found, and almost all of its known remains are isolated bones scattered among several museums. These do not give us a true description of Acanthopholus. Acrocanthosaurus atokensis. This huge carnivorous dinosaur, a theropod, 
is famous for the tall spines on its neck, back, and tail. These spines were as much as 60 centimeters high in large individuals, and gave this dinosaur a powerful looking profile. The tall vertebral spines served as attachment points for powerful neck, back, and tail muscles, and may have been useful in grabbing, holding, or dismembering prey. Tall spines evolved in various dinosaur groups, plant eaters and meat eaters alike. In some instances, the spines supported a thin sail that may have helped keep the dinosaur cool. In other instances, such as the Acrocanthosaurus, the spines were embedded in a thick ridge of flesh. Acrocanthosaurus may have been a close relative, and possibly a descendant, of the late Jurassic theropod Allosaurus. Unlike Allosaurus, Acrocanthosaurus did not possess tall horns above its eyes. Well, we've learned since 1993 that Acrocanthosaurus was even quite a bit bigger, almost 40 feet long, 5 to 6 tons, and it was a Carcharodontosaur, one of a family of allosaurs that flourished in Africa and South America, especially during the early Cretaceous. When I was a creationist, I had to think all allosaurs were all the same. Adasaurus mongoliensis. This small carnivore, similar to the North American Dromaeosaurus, is known only from parts of a skull and some skull fragments. The chief difference between Adasaurus and other Dromaeosaurids is that the killer claw on its second toe was less imposing than theirs. The pelvis of Adasaurus was also unusual among theropods, having even more backwardly directed pubic bones than those of Deinonychus and Velociraptor. We do not know what effect these anatomical distinctions had on Adasaurus hunting style. Well, we've learned since 1993 that Adasaurus was about twice as big as we thought at that time. This Velociraptorine could have been put into Jurassic Park at life size. Egyptosaurus baheriensis. This large dinosaur is seldom heard about today. The only skeleton ever found was excavated from an oasis in the middle of the Egyptian Sahara and pulverized during World War II bombing. Unfortunately, even this type skeleton was incomplete, consisting mainly of leg bones and three fragmentary vertebrae. There was, however, enough to classify the animal and provide some idea of its general size and appearance, and so we know that Egyptosaurus was a titanosaurid, a moderate-sized, primitive, four-legged sauropod, perhaps with armor. Well, since 1993, we've learned that titanosaurids were hardly moderate-sized, Rather, they were extremely large, for the most part, and they were hardly primitive, as they were the most successful sauropods up to the end of the Cretaceous. Aeolosaurus rionegrinus. This bulky four-legged herbivore belonged to the Titanosaur family. It was similar enough to the Indian dinosaur Titanosaurus to place them both in the same subfamily, but Aeolosaurus had peculiar tail vertebrae with long, forward-pointing prongs on them. Aeolosaurus was probably about the same size as Egyptosaurus, that is, average for a titanosaurid. It was among the last of the titanosaurids, which ranged far across the earth in the Cretaceous period, especially in the southern hemisphere. Apisaurus elephantinus Although this was one of the first sauropod dinosaurs to be described, we still know next to nothing about it. The only specimen that we are sure belongs to this species is a single upper arm bone about one meter long. Although Apisaurus is sometimes listed as a titanosaurid, it could belong to any sauropod family. The bone is evidence that a fairly large sauropod lived in what is now France. Apisaurus has the distinction of being one of the most often misspelled dinosaur names. Atonix. Invalid name. See Massospondylus. Agathomus. Invalid name. See Triceratops. Agilosaurus louderbacki. Agilosaurus was a hypsilophodontid, one of a worldwide family of small, plant-eating, bird-hipped dinosaurs. Like some other hypsilophodontids, Agilosaurus had several sharp front teeth, probably for nipping leaves and cones off plants. It chewed with serrated, leaf-shaped teeth that lined the sides of its mouth. Agilosaurus hind legs were large and strong, and clearly belonged to a swift runner. Its skeleton was one of many well-preserved dinosaurs to emerge from the Dashenpu Quarry in Sichuan, China. 
Agilosaurus multidens. This was a larger species of Hypsilophodontid than the type species of Agilosaurus, about seven feet long. It was previously known as Yandusaurus multidens. Agrosaurus megillivrei. Agrosaurus was the first and oldest dinosaur found in Australia. It was a small prosauropod, or primitive four-legged plant eater. Its few remains, a forelimb, a hand, and a leg bone, closely resemble the bones of the British prosauropod, Thecodontosaurus. Some scientists therefore postulate that Agrosaurus was a similar small, primitive prosauropod that ran on its hind legs, walked on all four, and used its relatively large hand claws for defense. The astonishing thing about Agrosaurus is that we know anything about it at all. The British survey ship HMS Fly landed along the coast of northern Queensland in 1844. An explorer came ashore, did a bit of digging around, and made off with not only the first dinosaur fossils ever found in Australia, but also the only known Triassic Australian dinosaur. Dinosaurs of any sort, in any condition, are rare finds in Australia, and no more Agrosaurus fossils have ever been found. The discovery of Agrosaurus helps to prove that prosauropods lived all over the world during the late Triassic period. Alamosaurus sanwanensis. A large four-legged browser, Alamosaurus is the only sauropod known from the late Cretaceous period of North America. Giant sauropods dominated the American West at the end of the Jurassic, 145 million years ago. Then, for at least 25 million years, they seem to have been absent from North America. Alamosaurus was a titanosaurid. It may have come to North America from South America, where sauropods, titanosaurs in particular, remained abundant throughout the Cretaceous. Alamosaurus' body was as large as that of a patasaurus. Its tail, however, seems to have been a few yards shorter. Well, since 1993, we've learned Alamosaurus was actually the largest sauropod ever to walk North America. Albertosaurus sarcophagus. This large carnivore stalked Western North America some 8 million years before Tyrannosaurus rex and 11 million years before the end of dinosaur time. Both Tyrannosaurus and Albertosaurus belonged to the Tyrannosaurids the last and largest group of dinosaur carnivores discovered in both North America and Asia. Like Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurus had a huge skull with sharp serrated teeth for sawing meat. Albertosaurus had two-fingered hands and its arms were longer than Tyrannosaurus' stubby forelimbs. This animal was one of the faster runners among the Tyrannosaurids with a sleek build and long hind limbs. It differed from all other Tyrannosaurids in having a wide muzzle. Albertosaurus incrassatus, doubtful name. This species is known from teeth that are definitely Tyrannosaurid and do look something like Albertosaurus teeth. But they also resemble the teeth of other Albertosaurus and Aspletosaurus taurosus. Electrosaurus olsoni. This large carnivore was, for many years, a puzzle to paleontologists. All scientists had to go on were arm bones and leg bones found about 100 feet apart in the Gobi Desert in the 1920s. Although the leg bones resembled those of Tyrannosaurids such as Albertosaurus and Torvosaurus, note, Torvosaurus is not a Tyrannosaur. It's a Megalosaur. When I was a creationist, I thought Megalosaurs and Allosaurs might be the same. Probably this was a misprint for Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus was a Tyrannosaur very similar to Tyrannosaurus, but about half the size. When I was a creationist, I had to think all Tyrannosaurs were the same. This was easy with Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus, but Albertosaurus was more of a challenge. It made more sense to lump Albertosaurus with medium-sized Tyrannosaurs, like Electrosaurus, as you can see I did here. Of course, any serious thoughts about Tyrannosaurs on Noah's Ark will become a total farce. The arm bones, particularly the claw, were much larger than those of other Tyrannosaurids. In the early 1970s, more Electrosaurus specimens were found in Mongolia. These included leg bones similar to those described by paleontologist Charles Whitney Gilmore more than 40 years before, as well as skull and arm bones. 
The original leg bones were later determined to belong to Electrosaurus. The arm bones belonged to an as yet unidentified member of a peculiar family of theropods with large front limbs, the Segnosaurs. Electrosaurus had a long toothy skull. Its snout was smooth on top rather than rough and bumpy, as in later Tyrannosaurids. The forelimbs were larger than those in later Tyrannosaurs, but not nearly as large and powerful as those of the Segnosaur. Algoasaurus bowery. This four-legged plant eater is not well known, since its description is founded on one vertebra, a single leg bone, and a hoof. Before quarrymen realized that they had found a dinosaur skeleton, most of the bones of this dinosaur were pulverized to make bricks. This was doubly unfortunate, because only a few dinosaur fossils have ever been collected in this part of South Africa. Nevertheless, it appears Algoasaurus was a small sauropod, less than half the size of an adult Diplodocus. From the shape of its back vertebra, some paleontologists have included Algoasaurus in the Diplodocid family, but others have classified it as a Titanosaur, or even as an Ornithischian. The small size of the fossil suggests that it may be a half-grown. Eliaramus remotus was one of the Tyrannosaurids, the last and most advanced large carnivores in dinosaur evolution. Its most striking features were six small horns on top of its snout, two side by side, and four more in a single row ahead of them. These little horns were too small to have been useful in defense, but they probably helped distinguish males from females, or mature individuals from immature ones. Only one fragmentary and incomplete Alioramus skeleton has been found. Alioramus had a longer head than other Tyrannosaurids, and smaller and more numerous teeth than its relatives. It was small and slender for a Tyrannosaurid. Well, since 1993, we've learned a lot about Tyrannosaur evolution. We know they all started small and slender, both individually over the course of their lives, and as a family, as they evolved from small dinosaurs not much bigger than Compsognathus, all the way up to Tyrannosaurus rex. Because ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. So if Eliaramus was small and slender for a Tyrannosaur, and had a long head, and smaller and more numerous teeth, well, in other Tyrannosaurs, those are all typical juvenile characteristics. Aluwalia rex. Aluwalia rex was a large predator. Fragments of which were found in a shipment of fossils of the primitive prosauropod Euskelosaurus, sent in 1873 to an Austrian museum. For a long time, these were assumed to be parts of the prosauropod, leading scientists to think prosauropods were carnivores. And I believe since 1993, what do you know, we found that those were actually parts of the prosauropod, and prosauropods were more omnivorous than we thought. Allosaurus fragilis. Allosaurus is the best known large carnivore of Jurassic Western North America. A powerful flesh eater, it had a one meter long head, armed with more than 70, 7.5 centimeter long teeth. Like many other large theropods, Allosaurus had lower jaws which were hinged in front and could expand slightly sideways when it opened its mouth. A movable joint in the skull enabled the snout to move up and down relative to the back of the head. This made it possible for Allosaurus to wolf down huge chunks of meat. Allosaurus' hind legs were large and powerfully muscled and may have been able to carry it along at speeds of perhaps 20 miles per hour or more. Its forelimbs were much smaller but each was armed with three sharp claws as much as 25 centimeters long that it may have used to hold prey. Short, well-developed horns, the function of which is unknown, were located above and in front of each eye. This dinosaur was much smaller than the enormous browsers, the diplodocid sauropods, with which it coexisted. It was probably not large enough to single-handedly bring down a healthy adult sauropod. Some paleontologists speculate that Allosaurus hunted in packs. Like most meat-eaters, it may have been a scavenger. There are two large carnivores going under the name Allosaurus, as indicated by the distinctly different skulls in various museums. There are not enough complete specimens of the two forms to determine whether the differences are individual or represent different species or genera. Allosaurus was possibly the most common carnivore of the late Jurassic period. 
Thousands of individual bone specimens have been collected, indicating individuals ranging in size from juveniles 3 meters long to huge adults almost 12 meters. And you can see from the discussion of two large carnivores under the same name, Allosaurus is a classic debate subject between lumpers and splitters among paleontologists. It was one of the most common dinosaurs of its time, and several species have been identified, and so have numerous related genera and even families. As a creationist, I had to believe that there were at most one or two different kinds of allosaurus that had ever walked the earth. Well, I'm sure we'll talk more about that next time. For now, we reviewed from a Belosaurus through Allosaurus. Next time, we will pick up with a Lachadon. I hope you enjoyed the Softly Spoken Science Podcast. Good night. <laughs>